We're in Indy, and apparently so is the drama. Adam Schefter, we begin with you. Where do things stand between Colts and Carson Wentz at this point? I go back to what Chris Mortensen reported on Super Bowl Sunday, which was that Carson Wentz was likely to be traded or Oof. at least not be in Indianapolis. Mm. And so that begs the question, where are they at? And I think they're still going through the process of figuring out whether or not they could trade him whether or not it makes sense to release him. And I think part of that conversation is if you are moving on from him, in fact, as we seem to think will be the case, who are you replacing Carson Wentz with? They invested first and third round picks in him. They invest a lot of money in him. You see the money that's due and the money that becomes guaranteed on the screen on March 19th, $15 million in base salary, $5 million roster bonus. So there's a lot of money, a lot of picks, a lot of investment. And let's keep in mind also, that last season, Carson Wentz threw 27 touchdown passes and seven interceptions. 27 and seven. Who's doing better that they can get than 27 and seven who's out on the market right now? Probably somebody who didn't have 18 of them dropped or missed throughout the whole season. Oh. <laughs> yes, and of course, the, the memory of those last two games, though, Adam, is what's fresh yeah, in all of our yeah. minds and in the minds of other teams and their fan bases. Um, I can tell you where the Colts are right now, which is they're in a pickle. There really aren't good <laughs> options right yes. now when it comes to Wentz. Like, they can clear some cap space, but the best free agent available is Jameis Winston, and we can debate the merits of Winston versus Wentz and their upside, but that's obviously a flawed option for them. Uh, I don't, frankly, see another team willing to part much in the way of draft capital to take on that contract. Contract. Right. And of course, they traded away their first round pick to get Carson Wentz in the first place. So they're not able, if they want to get any of these guys we're about to talk about this week, they would have to trade even more. And I don't believe in the sunk cost fallacy. But at this point, I do question whether they have any better alternatives. Yeah. yeah, it's always about the next best alternative in the NFL when you're talking about personnel. And look, I think Bruce Arian summed that up perfectly when they asked him about what he thought about projected veteran player movement. And he goes, well, all these players that you're talking about, what are those teams going to do if they trade away their guy? Who are they going to go get? Mm -hmm. So really right now, Frank Reich and Chris Ballard, the GM, are in the same spot. Yep. As you just said, well, who is better than him? Mm -hmm. He did have a good regular season up until the last two weeks of this season. But right now, you're right. Those last two games are fresh in the mind yeah. of Chris Ballard and Robert Ursay. They right now, right now are sitting there looking at that and going, man, can we trust this guy? Can we trust this guy in the biggest moments? And Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.